hello children welcome back to my class so here i am with my new topic so dear children if you remember in my last class i had taught you the structure of flowers right so today we shall be doing pre fertilization events and structure all right in sexual reproduction in flower plants okay so <clears throat> if you remember i taught you that uh, in previous chapter okay, that there are three events right pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization in sexual reproduction right so we had discussed so many things regarding this event so here today we will learn about pre fertilization in plants okay what happens in pre fertilization and its structure all right so without wasting time let us start so let's start with the structure of flower that i had taught you so there i had mentioned that there are four holes in flower the number one is calyx number two is corolla number three is androecium and number four is gynoecium calyx is the green part okay green leafy part which is present at the base of the flower corolla is corolla is the colored part okay which attracts insects for pollination androecium is the male reproductive organ okay it means it is a group of stamen it is a group of stamen and gynoecium is the carpel which is female reproductive organ so here we will learn about first we will start with androecium okay the male reproductive organ so dear children in pre fertilization what happen plant they prepare themselves right for the next even that is for the fertilization there they produce gametes right a gametogenesis takes place and transfer of gamete takes place so these are the two main event which takes place in pre fertilization so which i had already discussed with you today we will discuss about the structure of male reproductive organ all right so let us start with this all right so as i told you that in pre fertilization there is two main event gamete transfer and gamete Uh, formation right so male and female gametes are produced now let us discuss first for the male gamete so we know that male gamete is what it's pollen grain right in flower okay so where does it produce it is produced in androecium okay that is by the stamen so now we will discuss the structure of this male reproductive organ so we'll start with its external appearance okay and then we'll go to the internal structure so let's start with the external so as i told you there is a bulb like structure okay so this bulb like structure is called anther correct and here you can see it is two part it has two part right number 1 number 2 so this is bilobed so anther are by lobed all right secondly this long slender like structure is called your filament okay which is also called a stalk correct so this stamen has three part okay anther filament and the next one is connector so here you can see here okay this filament and this anther they are connected by a connector okay so this is the external structure of the stamen here you can see there is an end so this end is called your distal end and here you can see sometimes this uh, filament they are attached with thalamus either with thalamus or with petals okay and so this end is called your proximal end correct okay, right? so this is the external structure of stamen that it has three part anther filament okay so anther is bilobed filament stalk long slender like structure and uh, it is connected by a connector right and it has two end it, the above one is called distal end and the below one is called your proximal end right and this two are connected by a connector right i hope that this is external structure is clear to you now we will learn the internal structure of this anther there are so many things inside this anther okay so let us see how does it view okay how, what uh, what does it look like when we cut the anther okay let me rub this beside that anther is bilobed there are so many things in so we are 
trying to learn in depth okay so let us learn some okay so when you cut the anther okay this is anther right when we cut it so it looks like this it will look like this if we view this under microscope okay the view will be this okay first thing let us start with its structure here you can see if i divide like this it means it is bilobe right so anther is bilobe second it has a cavity okay so anther has a cavity in one lobe there are two cavities and this cavity is called your theca therefore anther is also called as dithecus okay it has a thick uh, structure which is a cavity it's or you can say it's a cup like structure which is called theca so it is called as dithecus so the theca is separated by a long groove okay a stem like structure it uh, it is separated okay so here in a uh, diagram like you can see it will present like this okay the color okay you will see this in your uh, ncrt book all right or otherwise i'll send you a picture of uh, uh, this the long groove which separates theca all right coming to the next now let us discuss what does this theca theca have so here is your microsporangium so here in each lobe there will be two microsporangium at in the corner okay so this is your microsporin gem so there are 1 2 3 4 microsporin gem now what is microsporin gem so microsporin gem is the structure which produce pollen grain okay this is the one which produce pollen grain okay and therefore later on this microsporin gem it is called as pollen sac because it develop into pollen sac why because they start producing pollen grain all right so you don't have to get confused with microsporangium and pollen sac because it is same first at the beginning it is known as microsporangium and then when they start producing pollen grain they are said as pollen sac i hope this is clear to you all right now come to the next that is the layer okay so there are four layers the outermost layer is called your epidermis if see if you see even we animals have uh, the skin right which is called what epidermis right similarly the plants also have the outer layer which is called epidermis okay then after epidermis it comes your endothecium this part is called your endothecium later i will tell you what are the importance of this layer okay and then comes the middle layer it is seen as middle layer and this microsporangium okay it is surrounded by a wall a layer which is called your tapetum and this tapetum what does it do it provide nourishment it provide nourishment to this microsporangium now we'll see what does this microsporangium is filled with okay then this three layer middle layer epidermis and endothecium they protect this microsporangium why because they are the one which produce the male gamete right the pollen grain so therefore the function of this three layer is to protect the microsporangium correct so there are four layers that is called endothecium uh, ep, sorry let's start with the uh, outermost epidermis endothecium middle layer and tapetum all right now come to the structure of microsporangium yes one more thing how many microsporangium are there four all right so there are four microsporangium and this anther okay it is also called as tetragonal because it has four sides right therefore it is also called as tetragonal all right i hope that this is clear to you so let us see the structure of microsporin gm all right i hope that this is clear now let us see the internal structure of the microsporin gm what does it have so i am going to rub this so that i can show you the microsporin gm okay if i take this 
suppose this is one microsporin gene, okay? All right. So as I told you that this is a tapetum which provide nourishment. To whom does it provide nourishment? It provide nourishment to the tissue which is present at the center of this microsporangium. And this tissue is called your sporogenous tissue. Because this tissue is made up of homogeneous cell. And these are very special type of cell because the cell which is present here produce microspore. It produce microspore. So what is microspore? It is nothing but the pollen grain. Okay. It is nothing but the pollen grain. And this cell is your microspore mother cell. Am I clear? So it is nothing but microspore mother cell which is deployed in nature and this undergoes cell division okay meiotic cell division and it gives rise to microspore or that is called your pollen grain i hope that the structure of microsporin gem is clear to you that it is filled with sporogenous tissue and sporogenous tissue are made up of similar type of cell therefore it is called homogeneous cell and they are nothing but they are called as microspore mother cell and this microspore mother cell letter it gives rise to microspore that is pollen grain which is called as microsporogenesis this process is called microsporogenesis all right now let us see how this microsporogenesis is formed as i told you that this is deployed right now how from deployed it gives rise to haploid right haploid microspore because it's male gamete right it's male the way it takes place in human being to some extent the similarly it takes place here in microsporogenesis so this is the structure okay i hope that structure of uh, microsporangium is clear to you and the microsporogenesis is also clear to you right now let us see how does it divide so that it will be more clear to you okay let me write down the definition first for microsporogenesis few points that you should know and then i'll tell you the process okay so you can say microsporogenesis is formation of microspores from MMC, that is your microspore mother cell. So, do write this, it's full form, okay? By reduction division. So, here meiotic division will take place. Reduction means meiotic, okay? By reduction division, okay? It's called as your microsporogenesis so sporogenous cell as i told you that they differentiate right they are haploid so what happens suppose this is sporogenous tissue right it contains cell correct so this is your diploid in nature so next what happened okay before i start explaining this let me tell you that this division here it takes this meiosis okay here both meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 takes place right now it doesn't mean that they are separate okay actually it takes place in steps right therefore it is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and in that i will not go because you have already learned this in hs first year if you need any help then i'll help you later on all right so this is your deploy so what happened when it goes under meiotic okay division that is your meiosis right this will reduce right so this 2 and will become what two right means half and they are not separate okay they are present together so this is n this is n right later again this will again they will give rise to two this is your meiosis one and this will be your meiosis two where they will give rise and they are not different okay so how many they microspore they are producing they are producing four right one two three four correct so this is also called as your tetrad microspore and they are haploid in nature correct i hope that this is clear to you what is microsporogenesis so few more things let me tell you regarding this 
which you should know. So this is myocytes, right? Which is also called as your microspore mother cell. Microspore mother cell is also called as myocytes, correct? So they undergo meiotic division, right? And they undergo meiosis. And from there, four haploid microspores are produced, which is also called as microsporic uh, or microspore tetrad, okay? Microspore tetrad. I hope that this method is clear. Okay, I'll show you one more diagram. I hope by that it will be clear to you. So here you see this is myocytes that is MMC. Then it gives rise to two cell. Okay, here meiosis one takes place. And again from here it will become four. And then it will give rise to four. And later on it desiccates and they release the pollen grain. All right, so this is meiosis 2. Okay, so without wasting time, let me give you a quick revision that we had learned today. So we started with pre-fertilization. As I told you, pre-fertilization is an event where organisms prepare themselves for the next event that is fertilization. And here uh, in pre-fertilization, two steps are involved, gamete formation and gamete transfer. So there are male and female gamete. So female gamete is produced by female reproductive organ, male gamete is reproduced by male reproductive organ. <clears throat> so here we discuss about the male reproductive organ that is androsium or a group of stamen. These are same, okay, do not get confused. Androsium means a group of stamen, all right. So stamen, I have shown you the external structure that it has three main parts. Uh, it's anther, filament and the connector. And I have taught you about the ants, proximal end and uh, distal end. Then I have shown you the internal structure of anther. What does it possess? So it has uh, uh, theca, which is a cavity-like structure, correct? And then next it has, uh, it, uh, this theca have uh, microsporangium. Then what is microsporangium, right? I have shown you its structure also, as well as I had discussed the four different layers present in anther, right? What are the functions? And then I had discussed to you the microsporangium, its structure and what does it do? So, which involves one process called microsporogenesis. I have discussed what is microsporogenesis, how does they produce pollen grain, right? So, in my next class, I am going to teach you uh, the, <clears throat> what is pollen grain, okay? I shall be discussing the structure of pollen grain. So, till then, you learn this topic, okay? Then this will help you to understand better the next topic. So, this is all for today's class. I'll see you in my next class. Till then, keep learning. Take care.